Hi guys, Dane here, and welcome to my September 2018 book haul. So I went to the car boot sale today and got some books, and I'm going to show them to you. Okay, let's start with this. This is a good housekeeping step-by-step -step vegetarian cookbook. Let me see if there's a lead, uh, a, a, a little bit. Let me see if there's an author listed. If not, it'll just go under G for good, I guess. Main contributing author, Louise Pickford. There we go. Uh, yeah, this is a vegetarian cookbook. Obviously, I'm vegan as opposed to vegetarian, but quite often you can take something and, uh, you know, veganize it pretty simply. Uh, yeah, I'm going to look through this and add some of those to my recipes list. I have a, like, master list of recipes. Here we have How It Works, The Wife, A Lady Bird Book, and this is by J.A. Hazley and J.P. Morris, authors of Fajazzle, Pimp Your Farts. And, uh, yeah. Yeah, I've been working my way through the, the Ladybird books. The new ones, these are. These are the Ladybird books for grown-ups. Okay, then we have a Crested a Cowl, How to Cheat a Dragon's Curse. And uh, so this is book number something of the How to Train Your Dragon series. Kind of enjoyed them so far. So um, this will be my third one of the books. I haven't necessarily read them in order, but they're enjoyable enough. So, uh, yeah. Here we have The Breakdown by B.A. Paris. So this has been around a lot on booktube, it's kind of a thriller basically by the author who wrote this wrote uh, Behind Closed Doors, which I think was her first book and I was sent an advanced copy of it and really liked it and then like this was back when it came out and I've noticed recently people talking about B.A. Paris on booktube. So when I saw this book I thought I'd better pick it up, give it a go. Then we have this beautiful copy of Stoner by John Williams. This is, uh, what edition is this? Vintage Classics Hardback Edition. I think I paid a pound or 50p for it or something. Yeah, it's lovely. I've never read Stoner before, but um, I've heard good things about it again. So, And it's got one of those, look, these lovely little bookmarks built in. And then, finally, we have The Horrible Histories Blood Curdling Box of Books. So for this, I paid two pounds, which is equivalent to about three dollars, US dollars. And I've read a bunch of Horrible Histories before. But um, I don't have a beautiful box set like this. Look at it. It's lovely. So I'm going to work my way through the ones that I haven't read. And then keep the ones that I have. So this means I probably will have a few spares of this. Which I might send to Anthony Andrews again. But I'm just going to read through what we've got. There are loads. We have The Vicious Vikings. Terrible Tudors. Frightful First World War. Rotten Romans. I've actually read all of those ones so far. Villainous Victorians. I haven't read that one. Plenty more of these things to come. Woeful Second World War. Storming Normans. Incredible Incas. Groovy Greeks. Measly Middle Ages. Savage Stone Age. Slimy Stuarts. Gorgeous Georgians. Like Gorgeous George. Smashing Saxons. Blitzed Brits, Vile Victorians, Angry Aztecs, I'm, I'm struggling with these here, Balmy British Empire, Cutthroat Celts, and Awesome Egyptians. And what's cool about all these, well I mean it says here on the back the RRP of each of these is 5 99 which is over, it's with that's, so the, the RRP for one of these brand new it's three times what I paid for the entire box set. So I think I got a pretty good bargain. But um, I used to love these books. And I still do. You know, I still have a soft place in my heart for them. And um, like I remember when I was a kid. And I used to go out with my mum or whatever. And we'd go to some historic attraction or whatever. Like I'd go to Stonehenge or something. And what I'd come back with from the gift shop is one of these books. So it's nice to have the whole set. Happy days. I'm quite happy with that. And that'll go nicely with my other box sets. So eventually... When uh, I get my nice office and stuff, I'll probably have like my showpiece bookshelf, which will have all of my box sets on it and whatnot. Hello, I have a couple of parcels that came in the post. Let's start with this one because I think it also has popcorn in it. And as well as that, I have We Are Lucifer by Amy McLean, who is a booktuber and, well, I suppose she's more an author tuber. Slap. Well, what is she? She's like a movie. Well, Books, movie stuff, you'd probably know. You've probably come across her channel. And uh, yeah, this is her book, We Are Lucifer, set in Hampstead Heath. 
and I'm sure it'll be a freaky deaky knowing what Amy is like. So um, yeah, I'm keen to see what what her brain has created. So we will, we will see. Oh, and I'll I'll be reading that in the future for Todd and Danes indie read along. I'm supposed to do the dance. I forgot to do the dance. And here we have. My other indie choice, which I will be reading next month for the indie read along, and that is Osric Fingerbone and the Spring of Jacks by Michael Israel Jarvis. So this is the second book in a series. I've read the first one, which is Osric Fingerbone and the Boy Murderer, sort of set in eight, uh, 1800s London. A little bit of magic and whatnot thrown in, I seem to recall. I don't know. It's been a while since I read it, but Michael Israel Jarvis is an excellent author. I've read a bunch of his stuff before, and this is the only one of his books that I haven't read. And I only haven't read it because it came out quite recently. Oh, I'm in the acknowledgements. Dane Cobain, poet, author, champion of the struggle. The first person to manage my books professionally and a teacher by example. I know nobody who works harder at the rock face of the page. Oh, that's very nice of him. All right, hello. I have some parcels that have arrived in the post and that I can't get into. Here we go. I know what this is anyway. This is a children's book. So we have The Little Steamroller by Graham Greene, illustrated by Edward R. Dizon, or R. Disney, I don't even know. This is the another one of Graham Greene's children's books. Graham Greene's one of my favourite authors. I've already read The Little Fire Engine. In fact, I've already read all the others. I've read The Little Train, The Little Fire Engine, The Little Horse Bus. So this is the last one for me. And uh, yeah, I look forward to reading it. This is actually the one in the best condition. Oh god, now I have to try and say the name. But uh, a lot of booktubers will be happy with this one, I think. This is Andrzej Szapowski, The Last Wish. So this is the first book in the Witcher series. And as I understand it, these are short stories. And uh, original text copyright 1993. This is a 2007 translation. And uh, yeah, I just want to see whether I enjoy this, and if so, I will probably read the series. Never played the Witcher games, I'm not much of a gamer, but uh, heard the books are good, so. This has been sent to me by Charlie Heathcote. I can tell. Where's the postmark on this? Doesn't actually say. But this has been sent to me by Charlie Heathcote, because he mentioned potentially sending this to me. This is Americana, a novel by Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie. And Charlie basically bought this a while back and hasn't read it and realised he just isn't going to read it. So he asked if I wanted it, and I said yes. So I think I might even save this for one of the upcoming buddy reads. Uh, I think this could be a good one, because a bunch of people will want to read this one. I'm really baffled by the cover of this. Like... It's like, um, it's got a texture to it. It's got weird texture to it. Sorry, that's really inappropriate, isn't it? I wasn't meaning to do any dodgy gestures there. I was just stroking. Also a bit weird. Hello, I've got a book. It is addressed to me. From Julie's Bookshop Limited. Julie's Bookshop is missing an apostrophe in its name. And this is... Yeah, this is what I thought it was. This is Captain Idiot's Guide to School by Ian Walsh. So, uh, yeah, here we go. I'll read you the blurb. Ian Walsh is in his teens and lives in Dublin where he created Captain Idiot when he was just 13. This is his second book to feature Captain Idiot. This was published back in uh, 1992. So I had the first Captain Idiot book. Captain Idiot's Guide to Being an Idiot. So, um... And I used to love that when I was a kid, so I'm so excited to read this, because I've kind of known about it for a while. I don't know what ever happened to Ian Walsh, but, um... Hey, this has been filled in. This is to certify that Spencer Stern has successfully digested 128 pages of idiotness. We have such gems here as a cartoon where the teacher goes, What's HNO3, boy? And the kid goes, hmm, it's on the tip of my tongue. And the teacher goes, well, spit it out at once, it's nitric acid. Hello, we're going more vlog style today with the dodgy audio. Because I just have one package and I can't be bothered to set everything up. So, this is Work Rules, Insights from Inside Google that will transform how you live and lead by Laszlo Bock. And uh, this is another one of the books I'm getting paid to read and write a review of. I'm actually, uh, I've been given like a list of all the different books and I can, can choose which ones I want to do. So, um, 
I picked this one out because I've heard of Laszlo Bock, basically. Yeah, all right, lovely. Okay, uh, I, I, well, I went into town earlier to get a tattoo. So if you're wondering why I have cling film on my arm and wrist, that is why. Um, but while I was there, I also got some books. So I'm going to show you what I got. All right, we'll start with this stack. Uh, this was the charity shop stack. Yes. Fatherland by Robert Harris, which I believe is like alternate history. Uh, yeah. It says, it's set in a world that almost existed but never was. The Berlin that Hitler's architect, Albert Speer, planned to build. The hub of Victoria's Third Reich, extending from the Rhine to the Urals. So, um, that'd be interesting. I've heard of this one before. And, um, yeah. Then I've got uh, Booktube Darling, Never Let Me Go, by Kazuo Ishiguro. I've not read this, I don't know what it's about, but people on Booktube always said it was good, so I guess I'll give it a go. I mean, it's published by Faber and Faber, so that kind of gives me some hope to begin with. Uh, then we have How to Train Your Dragon, How to Be a Pirate by Cressida Cowell. I think this is book three, but don't quote me to that. Hold me on what? Oh, here we go. No, this is... This is number two. And then I found these two John Green books as well, which are like the remaining two I haven't read. After this, there is only the Let It Snow anthology, which I probably will never read. I probably won't read these, but I got them anyway because they were cheap. So I got Will Grayson, Will Grayson, uh, which is written with David Levithan. And then I got An Abundance of Catherines as well. So there we go. That was from the charity shop. Okay. Then next up I went into HMV, which I didn't even know still existed because they went into administration. They used to be like a music shop and I thought they went bankrupt and no longer existed. But apparently they do still exist. And uh, yeah, it was two books for £5. So I got Minority Report by Philip K. Dick and I got Ray Bradbury, Something Wicked This Way Comes. So there we go. Bit sci-fi. And then I went to the works and I picked up Richard Dawkins. I tried to call him Dawkins. I picked up Richard Dawkins, The Magic of Reality. So uh, just another one of his non-fiction books. And, uh, you know, I tend to quite enjoy these. I've read a few of them now. I picked up Helter Skelter by Vincent Bugliosi with Kurt Gentry. So this is the true story of the Manson murders. Heard this, uh, it's like seen this around a lot on BookTube and I thought it would be a good one to get to so uh, yeah looking forward to that and then finally I picked up a vegan on the go by Jerome Eckmeyer and Daniela Leis it's just a vegan cookbook but there are some recipes in this which I haven't perfected yet so for example stuffed tomatoes hash brown deluxe sandwich yeah it's got a recipe for vegan mayonnaise that actually looks okay Alrighty, uh, I have some more books. I went to my friend Ollie Jacobs' house. He is a indie author. Sorry, an indie author. I was going to say he was an. Uh, he was. A, oh, that would possibly be an H. I was going to say he, he is a. He is a High Wycombe author. He is an High Wycombe author. I used to always get confused because there was this game I used to play on Super Nintendo back in the day, and uh, it used to say you found an herb, and I was like, you don't say an herb. That's really weird. And then I realised it's because Americans say, you found an herb, because they have a silent H for some reason. Also, my granddad used to tell me off for not saying H. If you say H, he was like, you sound so common. You must not say H, you must say H. He was an English teacher, to be fair, so that might have something to do with it. Anyway, this is all off on a tangent. I went to Ollie's house. It was his wife's birthday, and so I had a few drinks. But while we were there, we also swapped books. So I gave him three of mine, and he gave me three of his. I actually have already read some of his work, and uh, recently reviewed Bad Sandwich on the channel for Todd and Danes in the Long. But anyway, actually, I think this is, he told me this is like Kirk Sandblaster books 2 three and five or something, but you don't have to read them in order, so we're good. So he gave me Kirk Sandblaster faces Tetrageddon, Kirk Sandblaster and the Ice Pirates of Lur, and Kirk Sandblaster faces Montague Santiago. And uh, I guess these are like sort of humorous space epics. Let me read you the blurb of this one. Ka-ching! 
As one of the richest men in Universia, a minor tetra crunch leaves Kirk Sandblaster without the finer things in life. That means no extravagant riches, no exotic planet trips, and definitely no expensive meats for his sandwiches. Therefore, along with his Zarian comrade Zla, Sandblaster must travel to the one group who know what's happened to his money, Tetraban. Get ready for another Kirk Sandblaster adventure featuring confused mercs, annoying rebels, ominous AI, vicious vending machines. Yeah, so there we go. I'm looking forward to these. I imagine these will be uh, weird AF, as the kids say. And uh, yeah, if you like the look of these, definitely check some of that. If you want to, if you want to get one of the Kirk Sandblaster books, I'm sure Ollie will be very, uh, very grateful. The artwork here, by the way, the artwork on this was done by Elaine M. Will, who did. Uh, she's a graphic novelist. She also did a graphic novel called Look Straight Ahead, and a graphic novel called Dust Ship Glory, which I reviewed on the channel kind of in its early days, and I'll link to below. Okay, I got this today. Dane Cobain. Oh, I almost read my address out there. What is this? Kinga Stefaniak, Nuthouse episode. So this is a poetry collection. Let me read this out. This collection of poems, written in psychiatric hospitals, tells about the experience of mental patients, isolation, injections, a strict environment of raw laws, and struggles with mental illness, addictions, and the love for a woman who gives meaning to the madness, the philosophy of psychoneurosis, to search for details of the fabric of the universe and golden eternity, love and desire, human contact, queer heritage, and the question of identity. Importance is in the presence of the city of Bristol and the city legends present in some poems. The city is personalised and connected with the poet's sense of identity. King Stefaniak was born in the year of the monkey, 1980, in Poland. Libra. Studied Polish philol... Fuck me. Studied, po studied Polish philology in Silesian University. Queer, anarchist, adventurer, traveller and natural born bilingual writer interested in sculpting written word on paper. Winner of Coastal Award for Poetry in 2016 and 2017. Lives in Bristol, England. Hello, it is the end of my haul. My microphone isn't working by the way. So we're going lo-fi for this. But the other day I got uh, this. This is a call of the life and times of Dave Grohl by Paul Brannigan. So I got that and then I received this in the post. Hey sweet, this is uh, Dr. Jenny Brockis, Future Brain. The 12 keys to create your high performance brain. And it looks like this. Uh, I'll probably read this soon because I think this is one of the ones I'm supposed to be writing an article on. So um, I need to get started. But anyway, that is it as well because that is all I have to show to you guys. So. As always, thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to hit that like button. If you've enjoyed this video, let me know in the comments if you've read any of these books. Hit subscribe if you're new here, and I will see you soon for another bookish video when hopefully my microphone will be working again. I need to order a new cable, so I'm going to go do that now. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.